Hello, good people of the internet. Today we are doing episode two of Suzerain. Check out the link for the episode one. Um, we're still very early into this game, even though we're like an hour in. And we have just had the first meeting briefing after our, you know, presidential uh, speech. So what is it, day one? I don't really know all the controls of the game. This is my first playthrough. Um, so we just had this briefing. Or well, we had a different briefing, did we? Not the current economic situation, maybe? Um, maybe we should be reading these reports. Let's, let's read a report, because maybe that doesn't progress the story. GNA prepares Tourism Act. Grand National Assembly in the whole sword is readying the Swarthland Tourism and Cultural Preservation Act. This act aims to enhance the cultural and tourism appeal of several cities, including Boron, Ribery, Lockhaven, Anrica, and Benfi, in a collective push to make Swarthland a global tourist destination. Cool. Is there any action that I take with this? No. <laughs> I thought it was taking me somewhere, but it's just because my mouse was at the top of the screen. Um, fine. Well, there are just lots of reports. Maybe I read all the reports. I don't know. I was assuming that some reports would make me choose an option for something. There are also 13 news things. Is that these things? If I click. Oh no, that's just... The game is very detailed. Um, so, and there are lots of papers. Fire Strikes, Whole Sword State University Archive. Disappointing. Um, broke out in the archives of the whole sword state university engulfing a significant part of the academic administration building. It was put out by local firefighters after burning for eight hours and ravaging through the historic library, which has many priceless documents. Reporters on the scene have relayed that the event occurred in the evening with multiple staff at the faculty being transported to the hospital with severe burns, but no deaths occurred. Director Sander Navik immediately commented that the incident was damaged several academic works and employee records we might have lost the world or we might have lost Makopa. We won't know until the day when we can enter the facility to evaluate. The world versus Makopa. I don't know what Makopa is. Is it like a tiny town somewhere? Committee for Reform, Speaker Gloratory. I mean, there's just so much to read. Um, includes all political parties of the assembly has been formed for the preparation of potential changes to the constitution has an asked to submit a comprehensive report to find a solution for the current problematic state of affairs USP wants to appeal to people of Sordland to help him maintain his stability in order to and sort yeah in order in the state um campaign bill fair representation in the assembly long stalled campaign bill has once again taken centre stage in the Grand National Assembly. The bill first proposed during the Alfonso presidency has been put on hold due to the 1953 election. Uh huh. Rain spoke of change and hope. Yes, we did. Last time we spoke of change and hope. And um, how many papers was that then? One, two, three. That looks like four. So, is there any of these? Okay, so that's that one. So, we could read all the other ones. Or did I le read President Anton Rain? So this is another paper. Sworn into office. Uh-huh. Yes. 37%. Which isn't, you know, a outright majority. But normally when there's several parties. That's a good enough margin. The congratulations came from these people. People gathered in the streets. I'm just skimming now. Um, Alfonso abandons Lothenburg's exclusive conclave. Former president and current chairman of Gasson. Oh, and there's even a codex which opens up. Privately owned Swordish Energy Company. Um, and engineering complex machinery. Headquartered in Lockhaven, uh, originally incorporated in Holzord. Uh huh. Basically, it's the private gas company. Maybe. I mean, if I read this more carefully, 
who had acquired the slim majority of the shares was elected CEO under Alfonso Chantanya by world-class civil and intellectual, mechanical, chemical and petroleum engineers from the Ankar uh, Amrakan archipelago and Makopa. Again, Makopa. So yeah, maybe it is a small country. Don't know. Um, anyway, I don't have time to read all about Gassam just now. But he announced his departure from the exclusive Lothaburg group. The decision has been fueled by growing disillusionment with the interests of the secretive organisation. I could ask who these people are. Private non-government organisation which assesses the economic conditions of Swordland and the globe. Currently the spokesman for the organisation is Autotask. Is this who I'm trying to get in contact with? Um, intent on charting his own course away from Lothburg. Only a few years after his defeat in 1953 elections. But isn't that the year we're in now? Another political setback for the man who led Swordland into his deepest recession back in 1951. Um, anyway. This year, uh, one year growth. Anyway, okay, there's too much information to read. Let's do some actual, like, gamey stuff. So I can read... Uh, preservation March. What looks interesting? What of Lachhaven loses importance? The latest marine traffic reports show that the port of Lachhaven is no longer the busiest of the Makopa continent. There you go, Makopa is the continent. Falling behind to the third position, while this is a negative indicator for our administration, Lackhaven still has the potential to shine again as a major trading center. Port of Lackhaven is the largest port of Swordland and holds an enormous uh, importance for the economy, particularly as the main distribution center linking the capital and the parts of Swordland to the rest of the world. This major port city will hopefully keep supporting the possible economic upturn in the entire country if investment projects succeed. I see. Um, so I don't know if I should be reading all these. Gas Field Discovery, Sawdust Grid Corporation's field research team has announced new gas field discoveries in Narble. These discoveries could enhance the city's energy supply and play a significant role in the broader energy landscape of Swordland. Preliminary analysis of the yield and quality of these fields is currently underway. The corporation will soon release a comprehensive report outlining extraction feasibility. The economic implications of these findings, particularly regarding potential growth and job creation in the region, are noteworthy. Increasing homelessness. What else do we have? Low production. Lack of investment. The mayor of Arvory, Eric Neal, reports a lack or Neal, I know. A lack of adequate infrastructure around Arvory, which seriously undermines the attractiveness of Arvory's investment climate. Fine. Uh, foreign investors, particularly from Agnolia, are becoming hesitant to invest in the city. Meanwhile, according to data published by the National Business Council, around 90% of company total expenditures in Agnland, Ag Agnland is absorbed by logistics costs, while in peer regions the figure is below 10%. Okay. And there is low production anyway. Report calls attention to the alarmingly low levels of productivity growth in the region of Agenland, where there are also high rates of food insecurity, malnutrition, and rural poverty in inner parts of the region. Let's let's click this. Uh, the HSU fire. Oh yes, yeah, so we read about in the newspaper. Fire report uh, broke out in the Academic Administration building of the Holsord State University. The initial report from the Chief of Police in Holsord indicates a near to complete destruction of employee records from 1890 until now, along with original copies of internationally recognised academic research destroyed. The extent of the damage is worse than expected. Okay, there's nothing I can do about it, though. Logistical issues? In a recent update from Holsord, the mayor 
expressed growing concerns about escalating traffic congestion linked to the city's burgeoning population and rapid urban expansion. A logistics report pinpointed the significant increase in traffic volume and subsequent slowing of transportation routes as the capital's most pressing issues. The mayor stressed that the lack of comprehensively designed large-scale land-based logistics hubs serving as the converging point for all transporters is exacerbating the issues faced by domestic transporters. Given Holstead's status as a sprawling metropolis, the current situation where transporters have established separate centres across 10 different districts is scattered and inefficient. Agreed. There's a lot of reports to read. I don't know, if I click on Overview, what does this provide? Military, law, policies, currently active, constitution, amendments require assembly and supreme court. Uh huh. I mean, I don't want to change if I don't. I don't. I don't want to say this one's the active one. But it's just all of these are active. Article ninety nine of the new constitution defines the member of honor, title, its appointment procedure, as well as the rights their members may exercise. The member of honor is at has absolute immunity and is a permanent member of the Grand National Assembly. He, she is entitled to his, her security team provided by the state's presidential guards. The member is also eligible, eligible to live in a special private re residence provided by the state for free. The only member of honour is Tarquin Sol. Lol. Ninety-nine new constitution defines this. When it says new, are we not creating our own? Anyway, there's connections, there's all these people, and we can click on them and read about them, which we're obviously not going to do just yet. We know who Petter is. Uh, who else is there? It's my... Got the defence minister. I, I don't know if, you know if we can talk to these people in this way. Well, this is just the whole codex, right? And that's what that is. So there's the codex. All the people, the Supreme Court. Which we only know three people, even though there's like at least 12 or something, 11. And then there's a journal. We are in turn one. Wow. Jo turn one of act one. There's four acts. Uh, clearly, just still getting used to this game. So there's policies and there's situations. And these are the currently active situations. Court backlog. Bloodish problem. Right. So I don't know if we need to... Well, these are just law. Policies. So there are situations in the military. I see. Economic Alphonsonomics. Economic landscape underwent a significant trans when former President Edvald Alfonso implemented free market reforms, shifting the country from a planned doctrine to a more market-oriented approach. This transition has placed Sordland in a unique position, straddling the realms of the two distinct economic systems. The ongoing challenge lies in striking a balance between these ideologies and harnessing the potential benefits while mitigating any adverse consequences. So we're straddling, market-oriented and whatever. Energy Protection Act at 20%. EPA implemented the 1930, in 1932 safeguard Sutherland energy industry from excessive foreign ownership. The act was amended in 1949 under the Alfonso government, setting the limit to uh, of foreign ownership and national security sensitive energy corporations at 20%. Fine. Situations? Well, there are a lot of situations there. Welfare, and this was where we said we would do stuff, maybe. Order. So many situations. Right, diplomacy. Lack of allies. Anyway, let's read these reports and then we'll go to that briefing. Public opinion report. People views on the need for democratic reform and the government's structure has changed over the last decade. Reformist propaganda from the leader of the People's Freedom and Justice Party, Friends Richter, have re resulted in a massive increase in demands for decrement 
democratic reforms. It is estimated that currently 55% of the population supports the reformist ideas. Only 55%. The general staff convened right after the election to congratulate our victory. All branches of the Swordish Armed Forces were represented in the meeting that took place at Camp Strong Arm with massive security measures. The Chief of the Armed Services, Valken Kruger, made a public press statement highlighting the increasing chances of military confrontation, confrontation in the eastern Makopa and requested support to strengthen the military. I was hoping an escape would, hope, would you know, change that. Anyway, let's go to this briefing, because we haven't, you know, done a briefing yet, and we're 50 minutes into this episode. And lots of talking, so I need to take a drink every now and then. Uh, Simon Hall and Gus Manja and Lilaeus Graf were about to arrive at the White Room for our scheduled econo economy meeting. This was the room in the Maroon Palace where all enforcement meetings were held. Two assistants arrived first, carrying a heavy projector. They stood with it by the door, waiting for the missus to enter. From the hallway, I heard Leia's Graf's voice. She was using the patient, almost motherly tone she often took in heated arguments. Gus, do you really think that such an economically advanced area is more in need of investment than Agonland? Lilaeus, my interior minister, strode in. She was clad in shades of brown and beige. The only spot of colour, a bright yellow dust no, dust no wrist cross. Okay. Anyway. Gus follows in. Don't be an idiot, Lilaeus. Lilaeus? Who knows? Uh, what about the unemployment crisis in... The Greater Hallsort and Gelsland regions are going through. These areas are our economic heartland. Gus curled his hands into fists. The ministers of agriculture and rural development temper hadn't changed since his days in the Alfonso administration, but neither had his reputation for getting things done. His far-reaching network of connections was unlike any other. Simon Hall quickly stepped between the two ministers without looking at either of them. He cleared his throat. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. I could ask what the debate's about. I mean, I want to do both. Very well, Mr. Fraser, Mr. Rain, it seems our ministers are feeling the same. Just as expected, how's it going, Gus and Linus? I can clearly see that. What was that discussion about? Um, I can clearly see that. What was the discussion? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, we have having a discussion about the infrastructure plans. If I may, I would like to talk to you about the... We'll get there, no rush. First, I'd like to conduct my economy presentation. I mean, fine, if we'll get there, let's begin. But I will be coming back to that point. Someone pulled out a silk handkerchief out of his pocket and briefly wiped his glasses. My staff and I have comprehensively analysed every aspect of. He was interrupted by a groan from one of the assistants by the door, both of who were now visibly struggling to hold up the heavy projector. Oh, you can put that there. Pointed for the painting of President Sol. The assistants placed the projector next to the table and sawed a white screen on the wall. Leave now. I mean, thank you, and please leave now. The assistants left the cabinet room. I was reminded that Simon had never quite had a way with people, but his facility with numbers, facility, anyway, um, with numbers had made him the most sought after economic specialist in Swordland. So I'm started looking for his slides. He always carried documentation around with him. Wait, leaned to the table and spoke. Simon, what happened to the new police station construction in Estord? While going through his briefcase, he paused for a moment to answer. He got stalled due to a government property boundary issue. I've been meaning to look at it. I can take a look at that one. Estord needs all the security help it can get. Sure, more time for me to spend on analyses. His eyes glittered when he finally found the slides he were looking for. He was looking for. 
There have been some developments about the Swordish Ren losing further value today. We have been trying to stabilize it with the central bank. The recession of 51 put enormous pressure on the economy, resulting in the collapse of the value of our currency. The entire situation was a significant cause of concern for our administration. Since economics is your forte, Mr. Rain, it is possible that you might already be aware of the data. I can still explain the current economic situation in better detail. I assume you get to ask all three of these. GDP and debt situation, unemployment and inflation rate. Yeah, I mean, just give me all the information. GDP is 310. I mean, I don't know if we can have an overview of that somewhere else. Don't necessarily need to ask you if I've got that. National debt is 427 billion. Okay, so national debt is over 100% of GDP. That's not good. Still hard to fathom that we lost nearly 150 billion in wealth. The past three years were tough. What is our unemployment? Yeah. Skyrocketed and now staggering 16%, and the inflation is at a relative high of 10%. Unemployment is increasing crime and drug use. We need to get people off the streets. The inflation isn't helping our average citizen either. What is the status of the recession? Economy has been in recession of about 6%. In the past year, the average GDP has dropped from 15,000 per capita to 10,000 from 1951 to now. It's quite a drop. This administration's success depends on our ability to stop the recession. The sooner we can reach GDP growth, the better. Yep, have all the information. Scatter the paper stack in front of him in an orderly manner and took a final look at his notes before clearing his throat. As you can see, the situation is alarming, but not everything is negative. The extensive Privatization program of Alfonso and key foreign direct investments left us a large budget surplus, which we can use to stabilize the crisis. Um, if we have a surplus, why uh, What was the debt situation? Oh, I can't scroll up that high. Um, it's okay, so you can leave a conversation. It's a shame that I can't scroll up higher. I just wanted to see what the numbers were. Let me just... Is the overview of the country. It's the regional map. No, it just comes to, the, uh, to here. I don't know if there's a way to do it. Well... Anyway, I was just thinking... If there was a surplus, why is there a debt? But I mean, there's debt, which has been accumulated over the years, and you normally have a surplus, which will then clear down the larger debt. Still, you would be paying a lot of interest in that. Let's move on. Primary subject we need to settle is on what general path we will take in our term. Solonomics based nationalization. Happened in the 30s, and Alfonso's privatization began during the end of the 40s. What will our administration focus on? The main premises was to promote a free market economy to stop the recession. To be frank, I believe it is the only way out of the recession. I still do not support it. Why promote the private sector when we have qualified state owned enterprises? Because lack of competition has made them inefficient. Simon nodded. So we can ask about consequences of the free market. The more of the economy we control, the better we can manage the recession. What are the downsides of planned economy? We can ask all these questions. Much likely to be influenced by the world economy. Important to think about the subject because the upswings of the world economy will reflect the good on ours too. When the global economy crashes, we go down with it. Structural problems of solonomics are going to lead to a recession according to the predictions at the time. Anyway, either way, even if we pick one of the doctrines, we retain the option to make economic choices on a case by case basis. Not recommended. The last thing we need is a chaotic economic plan. Finally, something we can both agree on. There's another important point which has direct impact on our economy superpowers. We might have won the election, but I am still against aligning ourselves with any superpowers. Economically speaking, we're much more closer to Arcasia than United Contana. So a decision to align to the West makes more sense. 
must be very cautious. There are schemes being devised about Swordland. We cannot give in to their wants now or in the future, otherwise our country will turn into a pawn. I want you to reconsider your promise to align with Arcasia. We made a promise to the people, don't worry. I won't let Arcasia control Swordland. Entering the sphere of Arcasia will help boost our economy in many ways. They are wealthy and influential. Um, is it about the people or the economy? I exactly like to think it is of it as a very valuable partnership with deals we'll be getting are aligning ourselves with a strong country like Arcasia. Recession will surely end in no time. In return for what? Sourceland's independence. When the time comes, I hope we will make you will make the right decisions for our own good. We should attract more foreign direct investment. Mr. President, we saved the country from a fall on depression in 1952 and 53 by signing lucrative trade deals with nations such as Eurasia, Lesbia, and Canal. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Bishi will be in charge of informing you on those types of foreign policy decisions. We must first decide on our internal economic plan. For a legal document outlining possibilities with both economic doctrines listed, cabinet members looked at me. We have to thank Saul and his planned economy for the boom. It clearly shows the success of the system. Let's finish what Alfonso started with the capitalist free market reforms. His path was going to enrich Swordland. Um, what's on our long-term economic schedule? Would a free market focus bring us stronger allies? Or I can ask on that, but let's just go with this because I think that's what we're going to go for. The recession was the direct result of his free market reforms. History must note that the reason for the recession was because Alfonso was betrayed by his party. Not true, there was plenty of time for him to do it. If you can't make change happen in two years, then you are at fault. What's on our long-term economic schedule? Picking a construction company, trade relations, tax reform and privatisation initiatives would be some of them. Sticking to a solid planned economy strategy will be the right call. The five-year plans were fruitful in the past. Until they weren't. Um, would it bring us to stronger allies? Occasionally look at our country in more positive light. They're proponents of the free market economy. Has on the world economy is extensive. Our economic strategy should be based on internal reasoning, though. Yes. Final thoughts. Must remain in state control, no. We should look at opportunities like privatization to create financial resources. Market economy doesn't require as much guidance and could help us attract foreign capital. It's hard to fully agree or disagree with these options. I don't want to do privatization to create resources, but equally, I want to do it Um, you know, to improve the economy generally. So we shall, I mean, there are some things you shouldn't privatize. But let's go with the third one. Uh, especially from Arcasia, President Walker is always interested in expanding the economic zone of ATO. We could secure lucrative investments from capitalist countries. So what will our general economic plan promote? Free market economy, as we promised. Yes, can't say that I agree with this. Well, you can be displeased if you like. Now there's clarity on which direction we are heading. I will work on a good plan accordingly. This concludes our meeting and our next gathering. We will talk about the upcoming infrastructure investment plan. Now that the economic direction was taken, the ministers dispersed for lunch at the Maroon Palace. So I have made a decision there. Um, and I can have another meeting? Or do I want to read more things? There's more things that I should be reading, apparently. Let me go read some more things.
The Gassum Sea Rig off the coast of Lackhaven has paused oil extraction operations for its essential maintenance. The rig has been the significant significant contributor to Lackhaven's oil output, and its temporary shutdown could impact the city's production levels. The maintenance timeline remains uncertain. The local government is monitoring the situation and making arrangements to ensure minimal disruption in the city's oil supply until the normal operations remain suspended. The recent collapse of tourism industry in Lenkirk has led to a reduction in trade traffic and road maintenance. The road network is currently in service but is in need of substantial improvement. Ports, country roads and bridges similarly suffer from a lack of investment firms doing business in Lenk but Lenkirk report a significant shortage of warehousing facilities, particularly refrigerated facilities with implications both for the transportation system and the ability to serve the population's basic food and health needs. Wow. region of Bergia is among the worst hit regions in Sordon where homelessness has skyrocketed since the economic recession. The number of homeless in the city of Deir is more likely to have increased by 25% in the last year. The rise was particularly stark among uh, bloodish people where it increased by 72% in just six years. It is reported that homelessness among ethnic minorities has reached the highest level in more than a decade. The bloodish minority of the region now account for up to 47% of homeless people there. For the first time in three years, the agricultural output of Sana has increased. Many experts link the increased output to both the drop in temperatures and new farming practices that have been adopted in recent years. Additionally, farmers are now accessing more generous credit allowances from the government that were left over from the Alfonso administration. Ministry of Agriculture reports that the region's agricultural industry has the potential to become a powerhouse in the future if investments persist. The recession led to a reduction in rail assets, with more than a fifth of the railway network itself antiquated, being mothballed in the recent years. While the main lines of the railway network are currently in service, increasing demand in goods from Gales or to the capital is pushing the network to its limits. The rail signaling system in the region dates from the middle of the last century and is also in need of improvement. Gelsword is... Which one's Gelsword? I just saw it a second ago. Is this place? Okay. So that's the rail line. You can see it there on the map. Um, have we read all these things? Unemployment. Booming wine demand. In Boron, there's been significant surge in demand for the local wines. This sudden increase has led to a busy season for vineyards and wineries across the region. The cause of this rise in demand comes from international interests and it is certainly driving economic activity in the city. Wineries are ramping up production to meet the increased demand. Continued trends could further stimulate the region's economy. Uh, Nature Preservation March. Organised a march promoting ecological practices and nature preservation. The event witnessed significant participation demonstrating the local community's commitment to environmental issues. This peaceful demonstration has successfully raised awareness about Lyran's unique biodiversity and environmental challenges. Local authorities have noted the event and the message conveyed by the foundation. I could read this last one, but let's just leave it. Media strategy. Let's have another meeting then. Lucian and Petter arrived at my office to talk about recent developments and the media strategy. Both took their seats across from me. Lucian put on his reading glasses and quickly went over some documents. Petter turned to Lucian and nodded. Greetings, gentlemen. I have just received further information from the interior about the sudden fire that broke out the Holzell State University archives nearby. Tell me more. Initial reports from the Holzell Police Chief indicate the potential arson case in accordance with protocol. The Swordish Intelligence Directorate has been called. Is the said really necessary for this? Why would anyone get the archives of a university in the first place? I see no logical motive there. It seems like the chief suspects foreign sabotage. They informed us that, that a large section of the archive has been destroyed. It includes tens of thousands of globally recognized research documents and original by the great thinkers of our people. Shame so much was lost. I was asking what could the motive be? We need to support our education system to make new discoveries for the future. All three are true. 
Ähm. I mean, they're original documents, but they're not like they might have been copies elsewhere. So let's fix them up. Lucky most original copies in their other uh, have copies in other, yeah, and some international libraries. The first edition of my favorite book, Geopolitics of Sordland by Herman Equa, was destroyed too. Maybe it was just a freak accident. We do have the copies of most important works. No single fire can eradicate our knowledge. I see no point in destroying employee records either. Lucy mentioned that Marcel Coronti contacted him. The Corontis had always been known as one of the richest and most influential families in Sordland. He is no exception. He was the oldest son of Conrath, the industrialist and media mogul who founded Haas, the heart of Sordland conglomerate, the richest man in the, the entirety of Sordland. He has offered to meet with you, Mr. President. What does he want? I mean, we didn't we want to meet this guy? Or did we want to meet this guy? Why is Comrade sending his son? What, what does he want? After the passing of his father, may he rest in peace, Marcel aims to become the next CEO of the Haas conglomerate. He mentioned a productive collaboration. They are a powerful and influential media conglomerate to start with. They own the Sword and Today newspaper, Swordish Broadcasting Company, the, which means it would be wise to have them by our side. Sorry for interrupting. What does this productive collaboration entail? He did not wish to explain the details over the phone, but rather in person, I believe I'll be receiving a call from him sometime soon. As Pat has said, they have substantial power over the content of media outlets. Headlines radio shows that is what he would be offering. What he wants in return is what we need to understand. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to determine our general approach to media. I'm no media expert, but Lucia made some very interesting arguments at the preparation meeting yesterday. There are two ways we can approach the media. One of them is by influencing it, which is, has clear advantages. The other one is keeping it independent. The media must be independent. The media is a tool to be used. The media must be independent. Ideally, yes, but an unpopular leader will not be able to pass even the easiest reforms. It is of utmost importance to maintain public popularity and avoid damaging scandals or mistakes. I must stress one thing. The more people we have supporting our agenda, the more we can accomplish with someone on our side in an influential media organisation. We can do this very easily. I see what you're guessing at. Two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, no. Why make the assumption there'll be scandals and mistakes? We can always hope for the best, but we do we really think that nothing can go wrong, especially considering the very recent history of Sordland? Two knocks on the door. Who is it? Olivia Suno, my new secretary. Her dark curls bounced as she crossed the room to my desk. She spoke with a slight lilt in her voice. Like the drink. You know, pineapple flavoured and whatnot. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing like an accent now, but anyway. Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, Mr. Galad's secretary has been calling me and wanted me to relay a message. Marcel is on the line for Mr. Galad. While the ball is in our court now, would you like to talk to him, sir, or would you like me to? Um, what did he say earlier? Again, I'd like to go back and just confirm. Did he say that he, he was going to call him? I suppose I'll talk to him, but it means. Olivia left the room and the phone started ringing. I picked it up. Um, have I spoken to him before? Uh, it's a pleasure. Let's see. It's been nice. Pleasure, Mr. Caronte. Pleasure's all mine. 
I know your time is valuable, so I will, will not waste any of it. I was just like to see over Hoss. My strategy in running of this conglomerate will be different than my father's approach. This is why I'm offering a partnership deal regarding our media branch. I would like to formally invite you to my resort near Comriat for a meeting to discuss the details. Uh, what does that entail? Or I'd be interested in a meeting. Or thank you, but I have to refuse. I mean, yeah. Partners, Mr. President, surely we can talk about the details on the phone. I just wish to have a face to face conversation with you. I'll send you the details through my secretary if you're interested. Um, um, sure, we'll accept the offer. I mean, maybe I would say, call me, I'll talk to you in secret later. But, you know, then go have that meeting with him. You'll not be disappointed, I promise. Well then, I will let you return to your patch schedule. See you later, Mr. President. Goodbye. We'll see you later. I'll set things up right away. Expect a worthwhile meeting next month. It's settled then. Look forward to next month. I wonder if he has a pool. Here's we're done for today. We will continue where we left off later. Thank you for your time. Good work with Marcel. Keep it up. Let's be positive. Lucien and Petter nodded before gathering their documents and leaving my office. We were already getting the attention of key figures and potentially dangerous ones. Indeed. Um, so we have a codex entry updated for Comrath, Marcel, and Haas. Fluctuating energy prices. Situations are updated. So this is my problem, is that I'm having all these meetings, but I'm not dealing with any of these things. Swordsman is currently grappling with fluctuation energy, fluctuating energy prices, a development causing uncertainty in the domestic market. This unpredictability may lead to significant repercussions for Sortland's economy and can influence both domestic policy and international trade relations. Mm -hmm. It's like, what am I... Did that count as a turn because I had the meeting? Do I need to be dealing with some of these things? I mean, yes, I just... We've agreed to promote market economy. I suppose that's there. Is there anything new here? Reform committee has been convened to engage in extensive discussions, sure. And I can read that report. Again, there's like more reports here. Tourism potential. Invests in mega... Was this where we were? No, mega infrastructure. A decision to invest in one or two planned mega infrastructure projects. Uh-huh. Or I can look at this. And I don't know. Anyway, this is probably enough for this episode. Um, thank you for watching. If you, I'll probably record another one of these, so look out for that uh, coming soon. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you want to see more like this or something similar on the channel, then please subscribe. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.